natural disasters, murders, and a mystery. An Echo from the Past is a scenario that was originally written for the first edition cult rules that has been revamped for the fourth edition Divinity Lost rules. This is a longer one-shot scenario that would take one to two sessions to complete and is best played with four players. This takes place in the 1990s and starts out in Stockholm, Sweden. However, the investigation will lead players to both Paris and Rome. Players will be thrust into investigating a series of murders as memories they never knew they lost start to come back. Quick content warning, this particular scenario focuses on strong religious concepts, so it's always a good idea to check in with players' comfort level before diving into the scenario. And from here on out, there's going to be massive spoilers. The story is that the four players are actually the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They just don't remember that they are yet. So this is where it's really helpful to use the pre-generated characters in the scenario as it's going to help support the entire story. In cult lore, we are all trapped in this illusion and jailers and lictors walk among us to keep us trapped here. In the scenario, the character, the Dark Messiah, he's actually wanting to break the barrier of the illusion and show humans the truth. The Dark Messiah has appeared as many names, but currently walks as Michael Agnew, who is planning the apocalypse as he believes humanity will rise from its ashes. His plan is to break the seven seals that were used to create this human prison. And the seven seals are the lictors that actually hold high positions in the church. These lectures held positions of power throughout our societies, keeping us distracted with endless conflicts, impossible commitments, and aching desires. And the Dark Messiah, aka Michael, aka Jim Morrison, which is what the Pisces remember him by, will begin to murder them. Ultimately, the players are going to be given a decision to either choose an apocalypse or stay in captivity. This is broken down into five episodes, and I love that it was organized like this because it was a lot more manageable to piece together the story in these little bits and also helpful for pacing. As each of the seals are undone or broken, there will be a natural disaster, so there's a lot of intense things going on in the scenario. But at the same time, the players start to get abilities and powers and memories back that start to remind them of their true selves as this game progresses. And a quick GM tip is to print off this timeline and actually mark off the physical dates as you go, just so you remember where you're at in the scenario. So the first episode takes place in 1991, October 27th. It begins in Stockholm subway system and starts right away with some action as the lights go out and screams erupt in the subway car. The red emergency lights flicker to reveal blood and dead bodies surrounding the four PCs. The first seal has been broken. Don't forget to give your players their first power, which is heightened senses. Now, as the chaos is going on around them, these heightened senses are probably going to be very overwhelming for them. In addition, the four horsemen's mounts can sense their masters are waking up. They appear in the subway car and speak to the PCs to let them know they're awaiting orders. But the speaking is not very clear and it's mumbled and kind of can only pick out a couple of words. Another tip for you here is you could pre-record this message on your phone. That's what I ended up doing and it really creeped my players out as the muffled monster sounding thing came up over this phone instead of via me. <laughs> this interaction could go a variety of different ways. The police might end up getting involved, but don't feel like you need to force it. That's just one way that this could go. They could also escape or go different avenues. It will end with a phone call of the Dark Messiah saying, come meet me at my end. The second episode takes place in Stockholm right after the events at the subway system, and I highly recommend that you encourage players to examine the memories on their sheet at this point in time. My players didn't really think to do that, and so they felt a little bit lost, and in the game they wanted to separate and it was gonna get a little bit messy. Don't feel like you are pushing too much if you tell them right away. Just look at the memories on your sheet, it's gonna help you a lot here. Another way you could more subtly do this is just say they have a little bit of a ping in their brain that feels like a memory that's new that they haven't recognized before. And perhaps they feel the need to ask other players if they're experiencing this as well. Eventually, they should learn that they have a connection with someone named Jim Morrison. Now, in episode one, they actually had some symbols on their foreheads after the subway event happened. 
and my players wanted to investigate this symbol. It was a little bit tough because in the scenario there was no picture for me, there was a little bit of a description, but it wasn't totally clear. So be prepared that your investigators might want to research the symbol and also see what it looks like if you want to do a sketch beforehand or just be prepared with a little bit more description. Eventually on the police or maybe in the news, they will hear of a murder of a Catholic cardinal. And this triggers episode three. This is a part of the scenario I struggled a little bit because it felt like the players were really being dragged along through the story as opposed to them actually investigating and trying to uncover what's happening because it was a little bit unclear of the direction that they needed to go. So I as a GM had to have a little bit more of a heavy hand than I like to, to get them in the right direction of this Jim Morrison situation and uncover what's happening. But your job as a GM here is to pace the different seals being broken. Now it could happen either when they're in Paris or in Rome, but there's going to be different points in which the natural disasters kick off triggering this new memories and new abilities that are awakening for the players. And I think the real struggle is the memories weren't clear enough for them to really understand and put the pieces together. Now, I understand the concept of it being a slow build and not really having all the full picture, but I think more information in the memories perhaps would have helped them go to the right place and understand what was happening without me kind of having to drag them through the story. Now behind the scenes, the lictors are meeting, the messiah must be killed, and the four horsemen have been located. There is a lictor who is sent to take care of the horsemen, his name is Padre Louis Chavrel, and this guy is creepy. Take advantage of the picture that they give in the scenario and lean into his grossness. I stood up at the table, made myself look as big as possible, tried to lower my voice as much as I could, and really made this disgusting sounding voices so that they were enthralled by what this creature was and what they were seeing. At this point he's trying to turn the PCs against the Dark Messiah and trying to convince them to help the church. This will lead them to Rome which is the fourth episode. And by this point the Dark Messiah's murder should be escalating in frequency. They're going to encounter a taxi driver who has spotted the Dark Messiah or if the players give a description as such, and if they don't this might be a nice place to nudge again because it's really important that they get this clue. Through the investigation of this hotel they actually learn that he's hiding under a church in a water cistern. So they travel to the Dark Messiah's lair and they're offered cheese, wine, and bread. And there's a monologue that you can read for the background of this story. And at this point the pieces should come together for the PCs and they have to make the decision now on who they're going to side with. Which leads into the fifth and final episode where they make this decision. Now this is going to be the climax of your scenario and likely will take place at the Vatican. If they're like my players they might go to the Vatican right away when they go to Rome so be prepared if they do that because at that point they wouldn't have talked to the Dark Messiah. So I made a little bit of an intro scene with the lictors and their panic and trying to convince them again to help the church. But eventually it's going to be one seal left which is the Pope and the Dark Messiah is is giving the four horsemen the choice there to trigger the apocalypse by killing the Pope or just leaving him be. My players ended up triggering the apocalypse and they actually felt like it wasn't that much of a choice because by that time they knew they were the four horsemen and they knew their characters wouldn't have made the choice to not choose of the apocalypse. So that's kind of how the story unfolded and just be aware that they might feel like they might have been pushed in that direction. The scenario did feel pretty linear like the players were just kind of along for the ride for the story, but the story was really good. We enjoyed learning about the four horsemen and the background of cult. This is also I feel like a really good intro into the cult game because it hits on a lot of the key points in the lore. This scenario is free to play so I'll link it in the description below and if you enjoy my content I do have a Patreon if you're interested in helping me out a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!